In this video, let's check out all the 26 verses of Quran that Wazim Rizwi claimed to promote terrorism, hatred and violence against non-Muslim. And I, the Indian monk, welcome you to join the East Wind Movement, the movement of Dharma, Truth and Empowerment. Brothers and sisters, I request you to not watch this video casually. Make this knowledge yours. This is an excellent chance for you to learn about the real face of Islam, to learn about the source of all the problems. And if you prefer to read, you can read my article on Quora.com. But it is us who have to work on the solution. And the solution is, once people start to ask logical questions, satanic beliefs will collapse. No Supreme Court, no politician will raise their voice. And if you think my work is important, then kindly share such videos and support my work on Patreon.com. So, does Quran promote hatred, terrorism and violence? Well, as per Wazim Rizvi, who is born and raised as a Muslim in India and later on he became the chairman of the Shia Central Waqf Board, he says that when these 26 verses of Quran are taught by a Mawlana to a Muslim student, then at a very young age, they are brainwashed to hate non-Muslims. These verses are used by the Islamists to justify the use of violence, terror and hatred against non-Muslim. Wazim Rizvi, as a true patriot and a concerned citizen, tried to address the root cause of all the problems. That is why he filed a public interest litigation in the Supreme Court of India demanding that such 26 verses of Quran, they should be declared as unconstitutional on the ground that they promote extremism and terrorism and they pose a serious threat on the sovereignty, unity and the integrity of a country. But his PIL was dismissed by the Supreme Court of India and he was fined for raising such concern. So guys, let's see all these 26 verses and for every single verse, there are 15 translations available, some on altafsi.com and some on quran.com and I strongly encourage you to do your own research and the best website for research is quran.com because you can easily check the previous and the next verses. All the link are in the description box. So the first objectionable verse from Quran chapter 2 verse 191. But to understand it properly, let's see the verse 190 to 193. So the verse 190 says, fight in the God's cause against those who fight you. But what does it mean to fight in the God's cause or fight in the way of Allah? So what is the God's cause? What is the way of Allah? The answer is in the following verses. The next verse 191 says, Kill them wherever you find them and drive them out from where they drove you out as fitna is more severe than killing. However, do not fight them near the sacred mosque Mecca. The next verse 192 says, But if they stop, then God is most forgiving and the most merciful. And the following verse 193 says, Fight them until there is no fitna and the obedience should remain for Allah. So it's clear that the Allah's cause or the way of Allah is that the obedience should remain for Allah alone. And how do you think the practicing Muslim will implement this in today's time when the holy book commands that the obedience should remain for Allah alone? Moving on to the second objectionable verse from Quran, chapter 2, verse 151. Here Allah says, Soon we shall cast terror into the hearts of unbelievers. Why will they cast terror? Because it says, they have joined companions with Allah, for which he had said no authority. Their abode will be fire, and the evil is the home of wrongdoers. So if you worship or follow Lord Shiva, Krishna or Jesus or Buddha, then you should know that your beliefs have no authority. And since you have associated them with Allah, so Allah will cause terror into your hearts. And the previous verse of chapter 2 193 says, fight until obedience remain for Allah alone. So how do you expect unity among people when they believe that what you follow is wrong and it has no authority? Wazim Rizvi is absolutely right when he says Quran threatens the peace, sovereignty and the unity. Third objectionable verse from Quran chapter 4 verse 56. Allah says, Those who have disbelieved in our verses, we shall certainly make them enter a fire. Whenever their skins are burned out, we will give them other skin 
in their place so that they may taste the punishment surely allah is almighty and all wise guys i don't know about you but these kind of verses makes me question is allah satan is muhammad the messenger of satan what kind of creator says that the disbelievers will enter hell fire and they will continue to burn in a loop for not accepting allah as god and for associating others with allah certainly a satanic one fourth objectionable verse from quran chapter 4 verse 89 it says they wish that you should disbelieve as they disbelieve and thus you and they become all alike so do not take friends from among them unless they migrate in the way of allah then if they turn away seize them and kill them wherever you find them and do not take from among them a friend or a helper so this fanatic verse of quran commands muslims to kill those muslims who turn away from islam that is an ex muslim this was talks about apostate killing that is why those who want to leave this satanic faith they are in constant fear fifth objectionable verse from quran chapter 4 verse 11 allah here says when you travel on earth there is no sin on you in shortening your salah that is prayer if you fear that this believer would put you in trouble surely the disbelievers are an open enemy for you so this is the objectionable part where allah says surely disbelievers are an open enemy to you disbelievers have been for you an evident enemy they are your sworn enemies so how do you think the muslim youth will react when he reads these kind of things will he grow up to be a peaceful man or will he grow up to be a potential terrorist and in my opinion a true practicing muslim a true practicing muslim is a lecture away from committing the unimaginable atrocities moving on to the sixth objectionable verse from quran chapter 5 verse 14 it says those who say we are christians we took a pledge so they have overlooked a good deal of advice they were given so we had them stuck with enmity and malice among them among them means jews and christians right through the day of doom the day of judgment and then allah will tell them what they were doing so how will the muslims implement this in today's time when it says they will strive enmity like jews and christians and hindus seventh objectionable verse from quran chapter 5 verse 51 oh you believers do not take the jews and christians for intimate friends they are friends to each other and whoever takes them as intimate friends he is one of them surely allah does not take the unjust people to the right path this book the holy quran is filled with hatred and what will the child take away from this apart from gathering hatred for other faith eighth objectionable verse from quran chapter 5 verse 57 Here Allah says oh you believers do not take as allies those who ridicule your religion and make fun of it whether people who were given the scriptures before you or disbelievers and be mindful of god if you are a true believer why would a muslim take non muslim as allies when allah in the above verse clearly says they are an open enemy of you they are the evident enemy sworn enemy Ninth objectionable verse from Quran chapter 8 verse 39 Allah in the previous verses was systematically filling up hatred towards non believers and in this verse he gives a purpose to the practicing muslims Allah here says and fight them that is disbelievers until there is no fitna fitna means idolatry disbelief and mischief and total obedience becomes for Allah so if they desist then Allah is indeed watchful over what they do so this is the purpose now fight them until total obedience remains for allah how are muslims going to implement this in today's time that's the question and brothers the answer is yours because the solution involves your efforts your involvement moving on to the 10th objectionable verse from quran chapter 8 verse 65 here allah is not only giving a purpose and a goal but he is also boosting their confidence it says 
O Muhammad, rouse the believers to fight. If they are twenty among you who are patient, they will overcome two hundred. And if they are one hundred among you, they will overcome one thousands of those who disbelieve, because they are a people who do not understand. Why does Allah want Muslims to kill non-Muslims? Because they do not understand Allah's message that the obedience should remain for Allah alone. How will the Muslims implement this in today's time? Do they pose a serious threat to the nation? Again, the answer is yours. Moving on to the eleventh objectionable verse from Quran, chapter eight, verse sixty-nine. Before we read the verse guys I want to ask you this what is keeping us away from performing the crimes like murder rape and theft is it our consciousness is it the feeling of guilt and shame the answer is yes it is our consciousness it is the feeling of guilt and shame which is keeping us away from committing such atrocities but in this verse allah has taken away that feeling also he gives a guilt free reward to the muslims who fight for the allah's cause that is the obedience should remain for allah alone so here he says so eat what you have taken as booty which is lawful and good and be pious to allah surely allah is ever forgiving ever merciful another translation says so enjoy in a good and lawful manner the things you have gained in the war and be mindful to god and in one of the hadith muhammad says fight the non believers and in return you will get white and beautiful ladies so is this the word of god or is this the word of satan which says these satanic things which give satanic purposes and to achieve those satanic purposes it gives incentives guilt free incentives in all the above 11 verses one thing is clear that islam is not a religion of peace as it promotes enmity hatred and intolerance so when it says obedience should remain for allah disbelievers are your obvious enemy they are your sworn enemy later on these kind of messages manifest in the form of rape murder and terrorism so the problem is not our muslim brothers the problem is the mindset which gets formed by reading these verses of quran and i believe those muslims who have done these kind of atrocities they are innocent because in their mind they are just following the god's commandment so what is the solution let's be interested in the solution the solution simply involves questioning the mindset which will give them clarity and eventually they will get rid of the hatred and intolerance just by questioning toxic mindset will dissolve so who is going to do that it is the people's movement it is our responsibility to empower ourselves with the knowledge and question the problematic source neither the supreme court nor any politician of any country can change this mindset they might be able to control it for some time but after that we have to bear the consequences so it is our duty to empower ourselves with the knowledge and question the problematic source it will just take few hours to be an expert on 5 to 6 topics and based on this you can have a conversation with those who have this mindset if you want to see a peaceful world where no 10 year old girl gets raped where no non muslim get killed in the name of islam then collectively we have to step up if we don't want these atrocities on our conscience and guys last but not the least in this journey we need your support to produce such videos and to make such videos in other languages as well so visit now on patreon.com and support our cause your small contribution will make a big difference thank you guys for watching see you in the part 2 of the video